And now, from your local election headquarters, the only locally produced political talk show discussing the issues that matter to you. This is Big Country Politics on KTAB. Thanks for being here for this week's edition of Big Country Politics. I'm Victor Sotelo. We start with what's making political headlines across the nation, state, and the big country. And first, would you know what to do in an active shooter situation? It's a question that's on everybody's mind these days. Trained professionals now are weighing in on how you can stay prepared. KTAB's Kelsey Pittman is digging deeper. A training more readily available for everyday people wanting to protect themselves from the threat of an active shooter. 500 scenarios now play out different. Like one scenario, this can play out where he pulls a gun. Next scenario is he doesn't. You know, um, it, it just all depends on how we see you reacting up here on the camera. JM4 Tacticals has created a way for gun users to see how possible events could play out. We're trying to help people get better at their skills by, by using their body and their mind. Local police departments are also emphasizing training to citizens because they say you always need a plan. We don't want to get into the gory details with our kids. Uh, we want them to know to look at this as another type of uh, disaster, unfortunately. And just like we prepare for those fires and those tornadoes, this is something else you might face. If you face this, they say to use the acronym AD. A is for avoid. If you hear gunfire that is to the west, what are you going to do? You're going to go out this door to the east. You're not going to go out the door you came into, which is towards the west, because the gunman, the gunman is coming. D, deny. You could take those, those desks, you could take this desk, you could block this whole door. If you block that door all the way to the top and they have to fight to get into it, what do they have to do also while they're unclogged? They have to put the weapon down to move things. So it makes them vulnerable, they don't want that. And the second D stands for defend. Anything that can be used to defend yourself that will inflict damage on that person is a weapon. And you're fighting for your life and that's what people don't understand is when that situation in front of you, you've got to fight to win. There is no loss. The loss is your life. If you want to do training at home on your own time, there is a free of charge online course at Texas State University Alert website. For Big Country Politics, I'm Kelsey Pittman. All right, thank you, Kelsey. You can learn more about these courses on our website at bigcountryhomepage.com. Well, the El Paso shootings was on the mind of residents in Brown County. United States Congressman Mike Conaway stopped in Brownwood hearing from voters on, in his 11th district, which stretches from the New Mexico border nearly to the Metroplex and includes a large chunk of the big country and the heartland. Along with immigration and health care, the obvious topic was the deadly weekend shootings in El Paso and Dayton. The congressman said the immediate rush to to pass laws to prevent something like this from happening doesn't consider why the shooters did what they did. There are legislative issues that are around that that can, be, you know, is there additional mental health uh, facilities or mental health capacity needs to be done? Uh, what is it about uh, their, both of their upbringing that led them to that particular point? What happened over the last couple of years? Did they self-radicalize? Did the internet play a role in that? Did gaming, uh, you know, violent gaming have a role? All those things are legitimate questions that we need to ask. Well, Conway is choosing not to seek re-election next year. And Sweetwater residents gathered early Tuesday morning last week for a question and answer session by their Texas Senator Charles Perry. Reflecting on his actions at the Capitol, Perry is giving his thoughts on policy from this last legislative session. Senator Charles Perry says this past legislative session was a bipartisan effort an overall success. A good session. You know, it always is when you have money. Noting several topics and efforts throughout the session, but also looking toward 2020 and beyond, acknowledging a need for untapped water sources. The truth is technology does exist. The truth is that water can be developed. And so what I'm trying to do over the next two years is push the narrative to where it is a possible. Let's evaluate it and make sure it's, it, it does work and that it is scalable. Perry assuaging concerns of about the hemp industry and his role in passing a bill that will allow farmers to grow the plant. He says he believes Texas can become a leader in hemp commodities. It's a great economic boom for an ag industry. It's uh, possibly going to be more environmental and sound when it comes to water usage. Uh, it doesn't have the issue with pests yet because it hasn't been in the crops. Appointed by Lieutenant Governor Patrick to the redistricting committee in June, Perry says he does not want Abilene to be split 
when the redistricting plan unfolds in 2021. It's not derogatory to current either way. You know, I think Abilene's a big enough city that it deserves its own voice, its one voice as senator. Commenting on Chinese sanctions, Perry supporting President Trump's efforts. I support what he's doing. It's painful on the short term, absolutely. We may not be able to buy that toy at Walmart as cheap as what we did, but China's taken far too much uh, at our expense for too many years, and we can outlast China on these tariffs. In and back here in Abilene, the AISD school board has approved a plan to include an 8% raise for the most experienced teachers in the district. The approval comes after the passing of House Bill 3, allowing raises for teachers and employees in Texas school districts. The total increase in pay totals $6.4 million. This is the largest raise for many district employees since 2006-2007 school year. Really appreciate it, and hope we landed on something that uh, that proves uh, how much we care about the work that you guys do every day, and acknowledges that. So, thank y'all very much. And here's how the plan breaks down. District employees will see an increase in their sub September paychecks. First year teacher salaries will increase from 45,000 to 47,000. A 6% raise will be given to those with one to five years experience and those with six to 15 years experience will get a 7% raise and teachers with 16 or more years of experience will receive an 8% raise. And still to come here on Big Country Politics, we're talking with Senator Don Buckingham about her work so far in Austin. We're back in two minutes.